Welcome to the presentation on Microsoft Teams, the future of collaboration, brought to you by ProConsult. My name is Dan Krishman. I'm currently the Sage Intact Practice Manager at Kerr Consulting. I'm a Microsoft Certified partners, uh, Partner and have over eight years of financial ERP software implementation experience. I call myself an adventurous scholar. I'm interested in how to make the workplace a more efficient and friction-free place. And that is how I came about Microsoft Teams in 2017. Today's presentation will consist of three parts. Part one will be an overview of Microsoft Teams. We'll go into a little bit more information about what is Microsoft Teams and how can it be used in your workplace. Part two will go into a little bit deep dive on how to create a team, hold a meeting, make a call, and some of the important settings that you should know about. Finally, part three, and probably the part I'm most passionate about, we'll deep dive a little bit deeper into the apps, flows, chatbots, and integrations that really open up the functionality of Microsoft Teams to interact with some of the programs you may already use today. We appreciate your participation and look forward to your interest in this topic. Part one, Microsoft Teams and Overview. What is Teams? Um, Teams is part of a slew of new collaboration platforms that are coming out or have come out on the market. Um, some competitors you may have already heard of uh, would be Slack, Asana, Jira. But the benefit of what Microsoft uh, has done with Microsoft Teams is it's brought in the universe of Microsoft products directly within uh, the platform. So imagine Facebook, email, Skype, um, Dropbox, all put together in one place. That is what Microsoft Teams really allows you to do. It's a hub for teamwork. It's customizable for each team that you uh, work in. And finally, it takes advantage of all of the security features that are already built into Office 365 that we know and love and allows it, you to control um, your entire organization from Microsoft's central administrative hub. So this is actually a, a nice little uh, icon that shows what the team plat Teams platform looks like. Uh, within the platform, you can set up unlimited amount of teams, and uh, these teams can be centered around specific departments, specific projects that you may be doing. And even within the teams, you'll be able to create private chats to ensure that your communication is always secure and always pointed to the correct uh, people. Additionally, it is mobile friendly. Personally, I'll have to say that the mobile app is almost better than the desktop app that, the, that Teams offers. So if you do go to Teams, uh, you'll really be losing out if you don't uh, download the either Android or iPhone uh, application for Microsoft Teams. It is a hub for teamwork. So it is a place where your entire staff for your organization can come together and collaborate around particular projects, leveraging the applications that you already know and love uh, that we've all used for quite some time. So everything from OneNote to Excel, Word, and SharePoint, it's all baked right into this program. It's very, very seamless to take advantage of. So whether you are sharing PowerPoints and wanted to collaborate around editing Excel spreadsheets or maybe some uh, letter around in uh, written in Word, you can do it all within the platform without ever leaving to uh, leaving outside of it uh, to a different tab or a different program inside the software. And finally, as I've already mentioned, there's really three flavors of Microsoft Teams. There is the web version, there is the desktop version, and the mobile version. And the difference between the three is with the web, web version, um, you access Microsoft Teams through your browser. With the desktop version, you get a little bit of additional benefit because it runs in the background and is always available as long as you are uh, on, on your laptop. And finally, the mobile edition, as I already mentioned, um, allows you to access 
all the features of the web and desktop from the comfort of your phone or tablet. It is, um, it is agnostic, so it doesn't matter whether you're using an Android device, a uh, Apple device, uh, both work seamlessly together. And finally, the teams are customizable. Uh, we'll touch a little bit more on this in our last session, but there is a whole app store, just like the Google Play Store or the iPhone Store. There's a whole app store built around Microsoft Teams that allows you to leverage other programs that you may already use directly in Intag. Some of us probably have used um, uh, things like uh, Zenefits or a CRM program, um, those things can actually be pulled in directly into Teams to keep your organization working within the platform and collaborating on um, commonplace items. And finally, the security that you enjoy in Microsoft Teams is the same level of security that you enjoy throughout the Microsoft 365 platform. Uh, everything from HIPAA compliance to SOC 1 and 2, you get it all wrapped up inside of Microsoft Teams. And in the third session of, our, of this webinar series, we'll really go into depth around how Microsoft Teams controls security and how easy it is to actually manage it through Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft Teams Admin Center. So as I mentioned, it is a chat-based workspace. It allows you to pull in some of the softwares we already use. We all use Outlook. A lot of us have used Skype in the past. Um, many of us, if we are on the 365 platform, are already leveraging some portion of the OneDrive or SharePoint. And uh, the less known maybe amongst uh, us would be Yammer, but is, uh, it is a really nice platform if you get a chance to check it out. So it is a really nice collaborative platform all pulled into one. And finally, just to let the cat out of the bag, you know, the pricing for this software is quite affordable. These are all the different types of licenses that you can purchase and likely many of you have already are already participating in one or more of these licenses. Microsoft Teams comes as part of the 365 package. It's just a matter of enabling and implementing the feature for your organization. So pricing is anywhere between $5 and $12 and 50 cents a month just depending on what version of Microsoft Teams you're using. So before we jump in the demo, I'll just quickly tell you a little story about Kirk Consulting and our experience with this platform. We started with Microsoft Teams in 2017, mid 2017, about the time that Microsoft Teams was released. At about that same time, we began a new practice called the Sage Intact practice, um, the uh, cloud-based ERP software. And I was looking for a way to help collaborate with our implementers to really get everybody to train in one space, begin to share knowledge in one space, um, and really organize our team uh, around a, a central platform that's outside of basic email. You know, we're all used to using Skype and maybe some portion of Facebook, um, Outlook. Uh, and so what this allowed me to do is really to bring the entire group in one central place so that we have one place where we're getting information out to the group. And then also it really um, engaged the rest of the, the folks to collaborate with each other as we were learning how to implement this new product. We then extended it out to the rest of the organization. So since then, um, I would say, it, it has taken about a year, year and a half to really evangelize from within and really convert a large part of the organization to using Teams, but now it's really become uh, commonplace. Uh, it's lowered the amount of emails that we're sending back and forth. It's sped up the level of communication and clarity around the projects that we work on. And finally, the real game changer for us is we extended it beyond just our organization. So when we uh, began new implementations, we actually brought in our new customers into the meetings platform. So you can actually extend this out to your customers, bring them in. And what happened was really, really interesting because many of those customers liked the platform so, so well, about a third of them actually implemented it for themselves. So as you see, I think from our demonstration today, uh, you'll see that maybe 
uh, you'll, you'll find it interesting to implement it for yourself. So without further ado, let's take a look at Microsoft Teams. So what I have launched here is the Microsoft Teams platform. It is downloaded. This is the desktop version. It runs in the background, much like Skype does or Outlook does. It, um, so it's always on. Um, any notifications from communications that I get pop up in my uh, left-hand notification bar. And just a quick overview of what, what are the different options that you see here. Along the left-hand side, you have various icons that give you access to 95% of what the system offers. The first uh, icon is the activity feed. And this is basically a sequential feed of all activity that is related to your interaction with your uh, peers. So in this case, you see I had a small call with Linda, I had a chat with Corey, um, I had another call with Vince. So it's very sequential. And here you can kind of see a chronological um, history of the interactions that you've had with your team. Chats are the place where you can begin to um, have peer-to-peer -peer interaction. It works very similar to what you see in, let's say, Facebook. Um, you're free to choose who you interact with, but the nice part about this is it is secure. The interaction is between you and the person that you are uh, communicating with. You do have the freedom of pulling in more than one person into a particular chat. So for example, in my communication with Linda, I could pull in Bob just by pressing this little icon here. And the nice part about this is, is the system will search the index of um, both internal and external members of your team's platform and it will automatically make some suggestions on who you're looking for. So just like that, I've expanded my communication with Linda and added Bob into the communication. And on the left-hand side, you see a historical um, historical log of all of your communications with particular people in and outside of your organization. Teams, this is really where the secret sauce of this program resides. Teams are a little bit different than peer-to-peer -peer chats. Teams are a way to organize your organization, uh, organize communication within your organization along specific types of lines. So you may have a team for your department, in this case, uh, in tech practice. You may have a team around a specific project. Maybe you're implementing a new CRM or a new software system and you wanna organize and add people to your team that are uh, specific to that activity. So you can create and customize an unlimited amount of teams. Within teams, you have the ability to create customized channels that even further specialize the communication to a specific um, group or task. In our case, within the intact practice, we have something called the implementation and training channel. We also pull in our marketing. We built a whole website around intact. And so, by communicating within these channels, we were able to really specialize and, and specify the types of um, information that we're sharing across the different channels. And calendars. Calendars is a really nice feature that they've built in. It is fully integrated, dual integrated with um, Outlook. So if you create a uh, meeting in Outlook, it will show up in, in, in Teams. If you create a meeting in Teams, it will show up in Outlook. So these two calendars are always in sync and always up to date. Microsoft Teams does have the ability to uh, have a calling or conferencing feature. So uh, using Microsoft's PSTN network that uh, historically was built in through Skype, you can actually dial directly out of Intact, or I'm sorry, Intact, Microsoft Teams you can actually receive phone calls from a landline or a mobile device directly into your uh, Teams account. You can store all of your contacts, which do get pulled in from your Outlook uh, contact list. And here, we even have a voicemail function. What I love about this function is it will automatically 
um, transcribe any voicemail messages that are received through this platform and then email you a transcript of it directly to Outlook automatically. Uh, pretty cool feature. Finally, there's uh, something called files and files integrate multiple platforms into uh, one place. So here there is a file area specific to Microsoft Teams and there's also one for OneDrive. However, you do have the ability, let's say you're a heavy Dropbox user, uh, heavy user of Box, Google Drive, you do have the ability to add in your own cloud storage option. So again, the whole point here is to be able to work within Teams and bring the files, bring your work directly into the program so you can work in one place. And the final thing I'll point out here, and I'll just pop this out here, is the vast amount of applications that are already available for um, in the App Store for Microsoft Teams. So you could both take advantage of some of these uh, integrations. For example, if uh, you are working through Teams and you want to produce legal documents and have your clients or prospects or uh, customers sign uh, digitally signed directly within the platform. Uh, you can integrate with Adobe Sign. You have options to integrate with some of uh, Intact, um, some of Microsoft Teams, uh, Microsoft's other applications like Microsoft Planner, OneNote. If you're a user of Dynamics 365, pull that in. Additionally, you do have something called chatbots, and we'll jump into those a lot more into in the fourth uh, fourth uh, webinar series. This is really where the platform begins to shine. You can build in using Microsoft's uh, language engine, smart bots that can give you automations around. Um, so to give you an example, uh, if you were, uh, if you wanted to load in your handbook, your employee handbook, new employees can actually uh, chat with the bot and ask questions that may be answered within the text of that handbook and the system will use Microsoft's learning engine to read the handbook and spit out an, an answer. Uh, there's lots, lots of automations that, can, uh, that you could benefit from using Microsoft's language engine. So let's just jump back to Microsoft Teams and let's take a look at how to interact within a new team. So the first thing that we would do is create a new team. Creating a new team is just a few clicks. By clicking on the join and create a new team, you are free to do a couple of things. One, create a brand new team. Two, join a team that you've been invited to. You can either uh, be provided a code or a lot of times if you are invited to the team by an outside firm, you will actually receive an email with a link back to the team and a step-by-step -step process of how to log in and get access. Additionally, you see some of the other options. So this is a, uh, a library of the other teams that are available in your organization that you're allowed to join. Once the team, so to create a team is pretty straightforward. You can either create a template or you can build one from scratch. And you can make it either public, which is available to everybody, or private. Most often we see that we use private, uh, private teams. You give it a name. And then you can go about adding users to the team. Adding users is pretty straightforward. If the members are already part of your organization, much like Bob, they will already show up in your list. If this is an external team that we want to invite outside guests to, we're free to type in their name and email address. So just type in their email address. And by doing so, adding them to the team, they will actually get a email, as I mentioned, with a link back to the team and uh, be, a, be able to see their, their uh, team from here. So let's go ahead and add them. Within a few moments, Microsoft Teams creates a brand new team for us to access. And now all communication within this new team um, will be managed in one place. I'm gonna jump back to one of the most uh, robust teams that we've created, which is the Intact Practice, and show you around the different areas 
of uh, the screen. Down at the bottom, to actually start a new chat, you have something called the chat thread. And here you can begin conversations with uh, either one member or many members or all members of your team. To do so, simply click the add button and search for the person that you would like to communicate with. In this case, I'm gonna pick Karay, say, I'll say Karay, hello, and welcome to the team. By posting this communication, Karay actually re received a notification that I've chatted with him and then uh, can choose to reply um, at, his, at his leisure. The other, oh, there he goes. Uh, another way that we can communicate in here is actually, <laughs> um, is actually uh, include the name of the channel. So by including the name of the channel, Everyone on this team now gets a notification without having to type each and one of the individual's names uh, in the organization. It's a really nice way to uh, send out mass information to everybody. And in my case, a lot of times we have new intact news coming out, and I like to share it with the entire team. This is a really fast way to get that information out. Within the communication thread, you actually have a couple of options. You actually you have the ability to not only communicate by text, but actually communicate by sharing files. To share a file, simply click the paperclip, and you have access to multiple um, multiple uh, file indexes. In this case, if I wanted to share some information from our weekly meeting, maybe I wanted to share the PowerPoint from our weekly meeting, I can simply share the link. And now everybody got a notification that I've shared a file. The beauty of this is that, um, as I mentioned in the, in, in the past, that you can actually access these files directly from Microsoft Teams without ever having to exit the program using Microsoft's online, uh, Microsoft Office Online. So by clicking on the file within a few seconds, the system will pop open PowerPoint Online and we have access to the PowerPoint. You have all this access to most of the same features as you have on um, PowerPoint directly within this view. And as easily I got in here, I can pop back out and I'm back to the team. Within this platform, we have a couple of options to uh, communicate. So not only can we communicate by thread, but we can actually start a meeting. Uh, we can both start and schedule a meeting directly within the software. We won't show a lot of detail on this in this webinar, wait for this uh, webinar number two, but you do have full conferencing options built in within Microsoft Teams. So just like maybe you use uh, GoToMeeting, or you're using Zoom, so too does Microsoft uh, Teams have the same options available. Some other options that I like, and uh, I like to have a little fun. I, I do use the GIF option quite a bit, so uh, I, I will uh, put a little humor to any presentation or even uh, communication. It's a great way to uh, just have a little fun within the, the program. Some other options that you have is you can pull in YouTube videos, you could pull in Microsoft Stream videos, more to come on that. And if you wanna have uh, just a little bit more flexibility in terms of um, the font, the character type uh, of, of your communication, of your text, you do have a full rich text editor built into the program. And finally, up at the top, you do have some options around adding uh, particular tabs. You have things like files, meeting notes, and you are free to add things called connectors directly into the system. So this is where we get access to Microsoft App Store. There at the moment is over 200 options that you could connect. Um, one of the ones that we use the most is Excel. We like to add in websites, Microsoft Streams, Smartsheets. So you are really free to um, 
add in your uh, tabs. Part two. In this section, we're going to learn how to set up a team in Microsoft Teams. We're going to learn about the Skype like calling features that are baked right into the program. We're also going to learn how to hold a Teams meeting. And finally, we're going to learn about the important settings that you should know about if you are going to be a user of Microsoft Teams. I've started off on the Settings tab right next to the Join or Create a Team Meeting link. And the reason why I've started off here is I do want to point out before we get started the Analytics button. And this is a really great jumping off point because as your organization grows with Microsoft Teams, you will have more and more teams and channels to manage. One of the best option, uh, one of the best features that Microsoft has released is to give you a top-down look into all of your teams and the activity of the users within a given period. So for example, here you see the various teams that we have that are active and you see spikes and dips in the user activity. You can also expand your view into 30 days and 90 days. This is very useful when every once in a while, once a quarter, you should review the activity within Teams to, uh, as an administrator, make a decision whether do we keep this team open or do we close it out. So without further ado, let's see what it's like to actually create a team. Let's scroll down to click join or create a team. Now in today's session we'll create a fictional team that is centered around a CRM rollout that we'll be doing for our company. So let's create a team and I'm going to decide to build a team from scratch. You do have the option to build a template and from that template create multiple teams. We'll be focusing on building a team from uh, the beginning. You do have the option to choose whether it's private or public. In this case, I'll choose this to be a private team. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say, I'm going to call it internal CRM rollout. And you're free to give it a description. Let's go ahead and create the team. This will generally take a few seconds to get set up. And here you really have two options. You have the options of adding internal members. In this case, I'm going to add a member uh, within our organization, John. But you do also have, as long as your administrator has enabled it, the ability to invite external users, so users that are outside of your organization. And to do so is pretty straightforward. Simply type in their email, and the system will automatically add them. Now this is a best practice. I do recommend that if you do type their email, Microsoft by default will just use all the characters that are to the left of the add symbol. Edit before you save and give this person a full name. This will make it much easier to tag them in notifications for future communication. Simply click the add sign. And when you add, in this case, two things occur. The first will be for John. John will be notified that he has become a member of a new team. Uh, additionally, uh, email will be sent to dkrishman at msn.com, notifying the external user that they have been invited to take part in a Kerr Consulting internal CRM rollout. This may be your external uh, consultant that's assisting you with the rollout that you do want to be able to bring into the team. You do also have the option to make team members owners of the team or members of the team. Owners of teams have the ability to add additional users or have the ability to um, control what users can and cannot post. In this case, I'll leave John as a member. Within a few seconds, the team has been created. Now in the background, what Microsoft has done is created a couple of things. It's created a SharePoint drive um, to capture all of the information and files that are being contained within this team. It's also created a OneDrive 
that is able to be synced to your Windows Explorer uh, when creating files. And we'll show you an example of that. So now that the team has been created, you do have a couple of options. You can add more people, which will simply bring out our team. You can create more channels. And in this case, I'm actually going to create an additional channel. And I'm going to call it CRM News. And now we see, if we scroll to the bottom, that we have an internal team has been created. A general channel would be created by default, and a CRM news channel is the channel that we just saw ourselves create. Now what can we do in here to let everyone know that this channel has been created? Well, one, they will get an automatic notification, but maybe we want to notify everybody and let them know, hey, welcome to the team. So you do have a couple of options. You can simply click on each individual member or you can blanket notify everybody by simply typing in the name of the team. And notice the name of the team pops up, it hyperlinks the name, and I say hello. What this will do is automatically notify everybody in the organization of the communication we just had. So what are some of the other fun options that are available in this uh, within the within the team? One of the options I like to use, and this is a good way to have just some fun, so let's take a little closer look at some of the options we have in terms of the settings that are available when setting up a team. To get to the settings, simply click on the three dials next to the, next to the team name. Hover over to Manage Team. And here you will see your name as the owner. And let's say we've changed our mind and maybe we want to make John an owner now. Simply override the member and make him an owner. And now John has full administrative rights to this team. The pending request tab will give you access to, will let you see who else has been invited to the team. Channels is a great place to see what channels are listed in the team and also control some of the details around how to post into the team. So you can actually add in more people, you can specify uh, whether we want to show it to members or not. So you do have a couple of control settings here. The settings is probably the most important tab here. One of the things I like to do is always give my team an icon. So for example, here you see the logo of the different organizations we have. It's an easy way to cue your eyes in on the various teams that you have open. Here you can control what members what actions members can take. So for example, you can allow members to create and update the channel or disallow that function. Lots of different options here in terms of control. You can also control what guest permissions are. So allowing guests to create interrupted channels, allowing guests to delete channels. And finally, one of the important parts to note here is the team code. If you do want to invite additional members to the team, you can generate a team code. And this team code can be shared with uh, members in or outside of your organization. From here, they can request access to the team using this team code. As I mentioned, there is an analytics tab, and here, obviously, we've had very little activity, but here you'll see a lot more information about how active this team is, who is most active, who is least active, and applications. Applications, by default, the applications that are available to this team are going to be the ones that you see here. These are Microsoft products that are baked right into the system, as I mentioned, the system already creates a SharePoint. It in interconnects other uh, Microsoft uh, 365 applications like Forms, OneNote, Planner, and there's additional ones like Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. Now let's take a look at some of the file saving functionality that's built into Microsoft Teams. 
new for the environment, Microsoft Teams automatically creates several tabs for you. One is the Post tab, which is the space where you collaborate with uh, your peers or team members. And then there's the Files tab. The Files tab is actually um, the SharePoint drive that is also connected to your Microsoft OneDrive. Now, one of uh, the tips that I would recommend for any user of Microsoft Teams is to sync your files to your Windows Explorer. It makes it much easier to manage the files and access the files on your laptop without losing the functionality of syncing files in Microsoft Teams to be shared with members of your organization. So let's take a look at how to do that. Notice this is a brand new team. We don't have any files here. I have one option. I could, for example, click and drag and drop a file here. But if you can imagine if we're managing multiple files, many different files, this may, be, may get a little cumbersome. One option that Microsoft offers you is to sync the OneDrive directly to your desktop. To do that, simply click Sync. Microsoft Teams will launch your OneDrive. And within a few minutes, the system has synced Microsoft OneDrive directly to my desktop. And now I can easily add files directly to um, my desktop here and have it automatically sync to the OneDrive in Microsoft Teams. So here I've downloaded a, a document called CRM Implementation Guide, and I'm simply going to drag drop it back into my internal team. Here we are. And let's take a look at how to sync it back. Simply uncheck and click back on files and this will activate an auto sync across OneDrive. And within a few seconds, we see our guide here. Now, what's great about uh, Microsoft Teams is, as I mentioned, it's built in already um, some basic functions uh, that are associated with its online functionality. So if, if you've got Excel online, Word online, or even a PDF viewer, you can actually view your PDFs directly in the system. And not only can you view the PDF, you can actually begin a conversation and discuss this document directly in the platform. So I can ping the entire team and say, and now we've actually started a conversation directly around this document. Very, very useful to keep everybody in the loop, keep everybody working together. Additionally, there is a third option to upload files, and that's simply clicking the Upload or Browse button, and that will take you out to the um, Windows Explorer, and here you can pick your file. I will add that this functionality that I just showed you in terms of syncing back to your desktop is really mainly available for internal users. Um, most external users will not be able to get access to the same functionality. They will have to use the <clears throat> online, uh, the Microsoft Teams version. They'll have to stay within the Microsoft Teams platform. The last tab I'd like to mention here is that comes as part of the standard um, provisioning is the wiki. Wiki is really simply a notes tab, but is very useful to keep track of things like meeting notes, uh, notes about particular decisions that you've made. So it's extremely useful for various options. I personally don't like the name wiki. It's kind of confusing to me, so I do have the option to rename it. And I usually just rename it notes. Renaming the tab is very straightforward. And here we are, we have the update. Now, if you're a Teams fanatic like me, I will point you to a, a interesting uh, area of the program and down here in the help section. Here, uh, if you click on the What's New tab, you will get up to date news of what are the features that are coming available in the system. And I will say that Microsoft has a pretty aggressive uh, rollout schedule. So they do constantly update features. As you can see here, 
just in May alone we've had three updates. Um, I like to keep track of this because I'm always looking for what are the new features in this program, what are things that I can pull into my repertoire and continue to expand my efficiencies and use of the system. If you like to review some of the trainings that are available and provided by Microsoft, I do recommend for any beginners of the system, once you get in here, click on the training tab and take a minute to go through some of the short videos available to get you acquainted with some of the links and options in the system. There's just so much we have, we wouldn't have time to go through it all. So now let's take a look at the calling functionality within Microsoft Teams. So Microsoft Teams does leverage the Skype for Business platform. It's baked right into the software. And here you can find a list of all the folks in your organization. Additionally, if you've enabled the PSTN feature, um, which is again in the Skype backend, you'll actually be able to use Microsoft Teams to dial to um, either mobile devices or uh, or landlines, and you can actually dial directly out of the program. So, interestingly enough, if you are in meetings, you can actually dial members in directly from to their cell phone. Here you can set your speed dial settings, you can review your contacts, and interestingly enough, your contacts are actually synced with your Outlook contacts, and if you're syncing your mobile device to your Outlook calendar, it'll actually pull in all the contacts from your mobile device directly to uh, Microsoft Teams. Also, you can view a history of your calls, any missed calls that you may have, incoming calls, um, and you have some settings in terms of calling them back. If they're already in Microsoft Teams, you can chat with them, add them to speed dial, or add them to your contact. Microsoft Teams does have a full voicemail functionality, and I'll show you in just a minute where you can customize your voicemail message. So here you can uh, review your voicemails. Uh, one of the benefits of uh, this feature is if you're not logged into Teams, uh, it will actually send you a uh, message directly to your email with a speech-to-text uh, version of the voicemail. So you can actually read the voicemail that was left to you in the email. Very nice function, very easy, and uh, very convenient for you to quickly and easily see who's called you and left messages for you in Microsoft Teams. To dial a number, simply click dial a number, and just like using your mobile device, you can dial a number directly out of here. You can also click on um, individuals' names here. So actually, here's a perfect example of the speech-to-text. You can hover over their names, and if you want to chat with them, there's also another option. So you do have lots of flexibility in this functionality. Another feature that is very useful within Microsoft Teams is the calendar feature. Now, Microsoft Teams does have its own calendar, but it is bi-directionally integrated with your Outlook calendar. So any meeting created in your Outlook calendar will show up in your Microsoft Teams calendar, and vice versa, any meeting created in your Microsoft Teams calendar will automatically show up in your Outlook calendar. This makes it nice and easy to make sure that you are always operating from a consolidated calendar view. You have the option to create a meeting, or even uh, create an ad hoc meeting, meet now, or create a meeting for some future date. So in this case, I'm gonna create a new meeting. And we can add individuals to the organization, to the, to the call. So I'm gonna add John. And you can also specify what channel you would want it in. So we're going to choose our internal CRM rollout project in the general channel. I like to make this a repetitive meeting, so we'll say weekly. You can also join a meeting directly from a team. To do so, simply click the uh, Meet Now button at the bottom of the conversation tab. Click Meet Now, and at this point, you can turn off the camera and start the meeting. Once you've started the meeting, 
you can choose to invite members of the team. For example, I can invite John or Dan. This is the meeting space, and it is worthwhile to get a little acquainted with some of the options here. One of the uh, options I mentioned is to invite members of the team, or you can actually dial a number. So if you want to call one of your um, co-workers directly on their mobile device, you can do so directly out of the system. Let's get a little bit acquainted with the control bar because there really are a lot of options that are baked in within the confines of this bar. Being able to toggle on and off the camera is very uh, valuable. Being able to mute your microphone automatically. There is a full screen share function, so if you'd like to share your screen, simply click on the screen share, choose a window of your choosing. If you have a video that you're sharing, make sure to click include system audio. By doing so, the video that you're sharing will be available to um, the members of the meeting. Let's get a little familiarized with our uh, settings. So if we scroll all the way up to the top, there's a link called Show Device Settings. And pro tip, if you are connected to a monitor, so if you're working from a desktop with a monitor that does not have a microphone, what may happen is that you may be able to hear the meeting members, but they will not be able to hear you. What I do recommend is you come in here if you're getting um, requests or uh, notifications that they can't hear you, come here to the setting and simply change your microphone from your monitor back to your laptop. Another option is the ability to take meeting notes. If you want to share meeting details quickly with somebody, you can do so. So here's the same meeting notes that are uh, meeting details that are available. You could also enter a full screen. This is a valuable feature if you just want the entire screen to be shared. And one nice feature that Microsoft Teams has just recently um, released is the ability to control the backgrounds. So if you are working from home, like many of us are, you are able to change the background setting um, and, and control uh, the background as it applies. Okay. Microsoft does have the ability to live caption. So this is a nice little function if uh, there are multiple members of the team and it's uh, sometimes difficult to understand everybody. Uh, Microsoft will live caption your conversation. And finally, there is a nice ability to start a recording. So uh, the owner of the meeting can actually create a recording and the recording will be saved back to a service that also provided by Microsoft called Microsoft Stream which once the video has finished rendering will actually write back to Microsoft Teams and this video will forever be available within the Microsoft Teams. So we'll start a quick recording as we go through some of the features and then we can go back to the team once it renders to actually see how the video shows up. All right, so let's end this meeting. And now that the meeting has completed, you see here that the recording has stopped. It is in the process of saving, and within a few minutes, it'll actually post the video directly within the thread of the team. Very nice, very convenient functionality. So now that we've gone through a little bit of the team setup, uh, calling, and teams meeting, let's, let's end on looking at some of the other features that are available. So Microsoft Team has a full suite of shortcuts. To get to those settings, simply type in forward slash keys, click on keys, and this will take you to the list of shortcuts. If you're a fan of shortcuts like I am, this can get you pretty much anywhere around the system if you memorize um, these quick and easy com key combinations.
I will mention that Microsoft Teams has a full-fledged mobile app that is highly recommended for you to download. The mobile app is as powerful as the desktop app and gives you some more functionality like being able to share your mobile screen in meetings, being able to share um, pictures or documents directly from your mobile device, and quickly be, be able to respond back to uh, your team if you are um, away from your desktop. Another good option is, just like Outlook, is the ability to set up uh, and change your status. To change your status, simply uh, go to your uh, avatar, click on availability, choose your availability. Uh, in this case, if I click do not disturb, members of my organization will get a notification that I'm not available, nor will I receive notifications for communication from our, my team members. So you do have a suite of options here. Let's take a look a little bit closer at some of the settings that are available in Microsoft Teams. The first one I like to point out is themes. I'm a big fan of the dark theme, but if, if you like a lighter uh, approach, uh, by default, Teams does default to a, a uh, light theme. As I mentioned, the dark theme, my favorite, easy on the eyes. And you do have some options around what happens with the application uh, when when it starts. So you can have it auto start. You can have the application open in the background. You can also um, disable the GPU hardware acceleration, which will give it um, less functionality, but will give your computer a little bit more bandwidth. And you can also change some of the languages. Uh, there's a whole delegation functionality built in here if you are out of the office and want the messaging to go to one of your coworkers. Privacy is a big thing. As I mentioned in our uh, the first part of this presentation is that uh, Microsoft Teams is wrapped up within the 365 security platform. So not only can you control some security directly in here, you can actually control security, uh, uh, administrators can control security across the platform using Microsoft's 365 groups. Notifications. So this is an important one. Um, uh, if you're a fan of being notified uh, often, uh, you probably want to just leave the default settings, which are specified whether you want to be uh, contacted both on the banner and an email. Um, if you want a little bit less information and not be notified, you can set it uh, just as a banner. And finally, if you just don't want to be notified at all, but want to be able to scroll through your feed and see, um, see that there's a communication and then it'll just show in feed. And you can do this for various types of communications, whether it's mentions, messages, or some of the other application, uh, some of the other information. Let's look at permissions. So here you can focus on uh, controlling what uh, permissions your computer gets access to or Microsoft Teams has access to on your computer. And finally, calls. This is an important one because uh, here you do have the ability to configure a voicemail. So when folks call your Microsoft Teams phone number, you can actually configure a voicemail instead of uh, the canned message. You can also specify uh, where it rings, right? If um, you can also forward the calls to different numbers, and if unanswered, you can specify. Well, what what do you want it to do? Do you want it to leave a voicemail? Um, do nothing? Do you want it to call a group of folks? So you do have a lot of functionality. This concludes this section of the presentation. Part three: Microsoft Teams going beyond. In this section, we're going to learn about the apps and connectors that are available within Microsoft Teams, the bots that you can leverage to enhance your interaction with both people and AI machine learning that is available within the Teams program. And finally, we'll take a look at some ideas around integrations that you could build out for your organization with platforms that you are already using today. Tabs are really the extension of your uh, 
teams view, right? So you have your teams across the left here, and then you have your main post conversation thread. Um, and then as you add functions, as you add applications, uh, there are new tabs that are added at the top for each new application connector or file that you add. And the benefit of this is that you can quickly get to the pertinent files that you and your team have been working with. There are some default tabs that are created when you create a new team. Um, and those are really these basic ones listed here, which are conversations, um, they, they now called it posts, uh, files, and they have something called wiki or notes, which is a, just a really nice place where you can keep track of your meeting notes. As far as adding tabs, Microsoft has really baked in all of the 365 um, applications, the online applications that they've been working on over the last decade, they have now baked them in completely and fully integrated them within the Microsoft Teams platform. So accessing any of these apps um, is really up to you whether you can uh, access it outside, but you could also access it directly within the Microsoft Teams view. One of the ones that uh, I like very much is Planner. It's a very uh, lightweight um, task list product that integrates with your Microsoft 365 platform and also all of the users that are part of it. Um, we'll see a little bit, a little small snippet of how that works. And the nice part about this is you can actually chat not only within the conversation, but within any one of these tabs. So let's say we're talking about a particular dashboard coming in from Power BI, or we're talking about a uh, um, uh, plan or to-do list, we can actually communicate using the, the uh, chat screen right alongside the data or screen that we're looking at. And this makes it very nice from a historical point of view to go back and see what was discussed about a particular screen or a particular data set. Connectors are for uh, connectors in Microsoft Teams are designed to expand the use of the platform into third party products. Um, you will find that uh, some of the common products you may already use, maybe your Salesforce CRM, maybe your Dynamics CRM, um, things like Adobe Sign, uh, are already have a connectors or extensions directly into Teams. And the wonderful part about it is, is again, you never have to go outside of the platform if you don't wish to. You can continue to work seamlessly within Microsoft Teams all while accessing some of these applications. So whether you want a feed, an RSS feed, which we'll take a look at, a uh, you know Twitter feed, uh, some information off your Trello cards, you really have a, a wonderful and ever-growing app store, um, connector store for Microsoft Teams. And I'll show you exactly how to get to those connectors, um, how to view them, uh, and then how to install them. Finally, bots. This is kind of the secret unsung hero, and I think is probably the least used across the Microsoft Teams platforms um, at the moment. However, uh, for those organizations that take the time to um, expand the use of bots throughout the organization, they can really see some one unique benefits from the bots and also some incredible efficiencies from repetitive tasks. And I'll give you a simple a little snippet of that in our presentation momentarily. So bots, um, if, if you guys don't know what those are, basically are artificial intelligent, uh, intelligent communication um, platforms that are in the background. And you can ask bots questions, uh, if they have a base of answers, they will take those questions, look for those answers, and spit them out back to you. If they don't know the answers, and I'll show you um, one way of teaching the bot new, new questions and answers, um, it will return an error, but then you can continue to expand. So bots are one of those things that only get better, just like um, using the uh, machine learning and AI functionalities that uh, already are part of the Microsoft 365 platform. All right, so 
why don't we uh, take a look at the platform? So before I jump over to Microsoft Teams, any, any questions? Yes, Dan, um, there has been one question. Uh, it said, do you happen to know when the option to pop out a window such as a Teams meeting will be available? So that's a great question. Uh, it is on the roadmap and has been on the roadmap for the last two quarters. Uh, they were supposed to release it in Q1 um, and it looks like they're going to be releasing it sometime at the end of Q2 uh, or the beginning of Q3. Um, uh, so that, that's a great question and I'm personally very excited about that functionality. Any others before we jump over? That's it for now. All right. So I'm gonna go back to uh, my Teams environment and um, you participated in our previous series. I've been working through a, a team called the CRM rollout uh, concept here is we're working together within our organization to roll out a new CRM system. And so within this team, I'm going to add some additional functionalities to maybe enable me to work a little smarter, a little faster. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add a connector. And the connector I'd like to add in this case will be Microsoft Planner. So I'm going to click this little plus sign up here and notice this gives me a plethora of options, right? So uh, the first thing that Microsoft presents to you are um, the most popular uh, connectors that are currently in use. And of course, they put in all of their Microsoft uh, products and additional uh, products like Adobe Sign, uh, Trello, uh, maybe a website that you want to pull into this view. But in this case, I want to create a uh, plan for designing this implementation. So I have a couple of options. I can either create a brand new plan, or if you're working off templates, if you've already have a canned plan design, you can actually drop down and choose a plan that you've already made. Now, in this case, I've actually already created a plan. So rather than pressing save, I'll show you what the output is. So once you press save, the system will create a tab at the top. Now, tab, it will actually notify the team that a new tab has been added with a link back to it. So I always have options. I can either, either click here or uh, when the notification comes through, I can click on my communication, automated communication, and it'll take me to the same place. So let's click on planning. And here I've already added some tasks. Planner is a really nice program. Again, it's a very lightweight uh, project planning program. Uh, you can customize tasks and assign them to people that are uh, that are part of the team. So I'll give you an example. We've created a, um, a, a design phase, right? So we, at the beginning of our implementation, we're all gonna sit down and we're gonna design uh, this platform. And so I've already created a setup uh, plan meeting for this, uh, this program. So, I'm going to maybe add another task and uh, I'll say um, follow up on design document. And I can set a due date, which is nice because in the background, as the due date approaches, the system will actually send the uh, assigned members emails letting them know, hey, here are your tasks that you're assigned to. Here's the ones that are coming due. Um, and even when you go past that date, the email will specify what, uh, what um, tasks have uh, are already laid. So in this case, I'm going to add two members. I'm going to add myself and I'm going to add John. Now notice this doesn't show you all of the people within your organization. This drop down gives you access only to the people that you've added to your team, which makes it very easy to very uh, quickly capture who your uh, reaching out to. And uh, the other thing I'll point out here is within the task uh, detail, and I'll go ahead and add the task. 
you can see some more information that you can take advantage of, such as what bucket does it go to? What's the progress, right? So maybe I've completed this task. I would set it to complete. Um, and even you can create checklists within that task if it requires a little bit more granularity. Now, the nice part about this is, is behind the scenes, I've added a, another um, connector called Microsoft Flow. Because what I would like the system to do is I would like to notify me and the person, people I've added to the task, both inside of Teams and also via email that a new task has been added. And that is done through a program called Flow. It's a workflow program that connects all of the Microsoft, plat uh, Microsoft applications and allows you to uh, send data, activities, events back and forth based on certain events occurring within your organization, within your platform. So to give you a flavor of that, I'm gonna go here to Microsoft Flow. And here I've designed a flow that says, when a new task is created in Microsoft Planner, in the CRM rollout uh, plan, go to the Microsoft team uh, for this plan and post a message based on these values. So say that a new task has been created, give me the title of the task, who it's assigned by, and when it's due. Oh, and additionally, hey, send me an email on top of that. And without further ado, notice the notification that just came in on my task bar. And here, I've said that the new task has been assigned. Here's the task. And here, by the way, here's when, when it's due. So I can see that the automation worked. And additionally, if I go back to my posts, there's actually another notification here that says, hey, just, to, just in case you didn't get it in your email, do check your uh, your notifications because there has been a task assigned to you. So this is a really nice combination of using multiple applications within the 365 platform to automate your everyday work. Uh, this is uh, another use of this would be things like uh, using uh, Microsoft Forms, right? Maybe you want to know, maybe you take a survey of uh, your team, uh, you know, maybe you want to know how you're doing as a manager and you take a survey of your team um, and you want anonymous response as well you can set up a microsoft form create a flow and when each one of those forms is submitted you'll get a notification both uh it could be within the team could be your, in your outlook inbox could be in your personal peer-to-peer -peer chat um, and all of this happens automatically without uh, extra work so I do recommend, uh, we don't have enough time to spend uh, today going into depth about flow, but I do recommend that you go into flow and uh, if anything, get familiarized with some of the canned templates that are available for automation. So I'm just gonna click templates here. Um, so if you're interested, for example, what are some automations that are available inside of Teams using workflow, you can search flow and here after it uh, renders, you'll see anything and everything that affects Microsoft Teams. Um, and, and you can already just click on these and very easy to set up. This is a low code, almost no code uh, design. And honestly, I'm not a coder. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. So that's a really, really nice automation that's built in here. Additionally, within, uh, within this team, um, I want to get an RSS feed on uh, specific topics. So maybe I want to create a team uh, channel that's specific to dynamic CRM news. So I've actually done that here um, by integrating a RSS feed directly into a, a channel. And this is done quite easily by clicking the plus sign. And while the system shows you the connectors in the initial screen, if you want to get to the apps list, simply click more apps. And this gives you the full blown um, detail of all applications that are available to connect directly into Microsoft Teams. Type in RSS, click your RSS option, and you can add another RSS. So maybe 
In this case, we want to add in an RSS uh, about a Teams blog, for example. So I could uh, search for my channel. Here we are. And maybe I want to add in another RSS feed into here. And in this case, I, there's a blog that I follow. Here's the RSS feed uh, link. And let that get set up here. Oops, I'm too fast. Let's give that one more try. Click more apps. RSS feed, let's add it to Teams. Let's pick our channel. Set up our connector. Give it a moment to load. There we go. Give it a name. So maybe Teams News. Add the address. And you can specify on what frequency the RSS is updated. Great. So now we've configured actually two RSS feeds for uh, this particular environment. And here you can already see it pulled in the first round of RSS, uh, RSS feeds that, are, that haven't been processed over the last 15 minutes. So very nice. Easy way to get your news about different blogs and maybe tidbits of information that are related to whatever project you may be working on. So uh, really, really nice and easy to get access to. So the other uh, thing that uh, we found useful is an application called uh, Adobe Sign. So uh, we do use this software for uh, doing external implementations. And in those cases, we may want to have some legal documents that um, we want our clients or customers to sign off on. Even internally, we may want to have some project documents that we sign off on. So I've integrated an app called Adobe Sign, and that allows you to process digital signatures directly through Teams. So here it is. You see that uh, Adobe Sign is available in our app, in our connectors list. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Adobe Sign. Give it a moment to load. It may ask me to sign in or, and the nice part about Adobe Sign is actually it will leverage your 365 login. So, um, you know, in most cases, as long as you don't have two-factor authentication turned on, and even if you do, you just have to sign in once. As long as you're in your Teams platform, you're in, uh, no extra logins that you need to remember. So in this case, I want to send a NDA and a non-disclosure agreement to one of our clients. And I'm just going to use my personal email here. Let's add a file. Well, let's use a template here. And there's my non-disclosure agreement. And the nice part is, again, without ever leaving Teams, you get the use, uh, full use of Adobe Sign. So from here, you can actually mock up the document based on your requirements. So let's give it a second to process. And then we'll see that we'll be able to add in specific uh, fields based on our requirements. So maybe we want to put in a um, validation field. Maybe we want to put in our initials right here. Uh, maybe we want to put our initials at the bottom of this as well. And notice there's some smart uh, AI machine learning in the background that actually identified already for you without you having to do any extra steps, um, certain fields. So the signature field, it automatically read the fact that this was a signature, understood that this was the field for it, and made it required because, of course, it's a legal document we need a signature on. So from here, you can go ahead and press send. And the document has been sent. Just to show you, I'm going to log into my email here. And this may take a moment or so to come through. And as a backup, it does carbon copy you, the sender, to let you know that a document has been sent. So I'll give it just one more here to update. We should see that we received a notification.
And the nice part about Adobe Sign is you can actually um, save templates of documents that you use over and over again. For example, in our organization, we use project plans that we get signed off on, non-disclosure agreements, um, partner agreements with uh, some of our partners that we work with. So here we go. Right out of Microsoft Teams, we got a notification on a legal document associated with a particular project with the digital request. I can review, sign it, and the nice part is after I complete it and sign it, it will actually post back into my uh, post to let us know or let the team know that this legal document has indeed been signed. So pretty, pretty snazzy uh, functionality. And again, um, this is no code, low code. This is very, very easy for your average user to set up. So we do have a few minutes left, and this is where I'd like to talk a little bit about the bots that are available uh, within the program. Uh, one of my favorite bots that is uh, available is something called the WhoBot. And you can access it multiple ways, but the fastest way to access it is just simply type the word who into uh, the search bar here. And by clicking on it, it actually gives you access to um, a chat screen between you and the bot. And here's some examples of what you can do within the WhoBot. You can find out if you do have your organization fully set up and the hierarchy within your organization, uh, within your Microsoft Dynamics admin portal set up of who is each, each individual, what's their job description, who do they report to. You can actually find and then, you know, what skills do they have, for example. You can actually uh, query that information with the who is. And then the one I really like is this who knows about. And this one is kind of neat because what Teams does is it actually goes and queries all the communication that has occurred uh, within the platform and looks for keywords. So, for example, we use a program called Sage Intact uh, for our accounting system, and we also resell this uh, software. So maybe I'm looking for somebody that has either worked with reports or talked a lot about reports. So I can say, who knows about Sage Intact reports? And the system will go back and query, and it's found three people that have talked about uh, particular reports. And this is nice because from here directly, I can click and directly speak to them about uh, what they're looking for. Who knows about um, Outlook, right? Anywhere Outlook is mentioned will pop up. Again, here's a few people that have mentioned Outlook in their discussions. So uh, this is just a nice, uh, nice little way to find out who, who in your organization, again, depending on the size, uh, knows what. <clears throat> you can also query what upcoming meetings people have. So here's an example of what's going on today. Uh, you can see organization wide and you can ask the bot, you know, what does Linda Finney have going on today? And it'll return her schedule for you. WhoBot is very useful. If you want to take it a step further, um, you can create your own bots and actually teach them to become uh, efficient within your organization. Within internally within our organization, we've actually been working with our own internal bot to expand some functionality. So. Imagine a world where um, the repetitive questions that you get, imagine I'm in, I work in HR and I'm constantly getting the same question. Where do I access my payroll, my paycheck stub? Where do I, uh, where do I get the employee handbook? Um, how do I log into my time management system? So behind the scenes, we've trained a bot through a system of, so a, through a, um, matrix of questions and answers to look for some of these common questions. So what you see here, and I'm just gonna uh, just show you how this works. So let's say I'm in here, I ask the bot, hey, where do I find the employee handbook? And it'll go out and query and notice it just comes back and gives me a link. I click on the link and it takes me right to my employee handbook. Imagine how powerful this is. Every form that someone wants to access, if they don't know where to access it, you teach your organization, hey, simply ask the bot the question and get an answer. Um, you can also ask uh, some information about, say, uh, your time management system. Maybe you uh, forgot your password to, um, 
uh, maybe you forgot how do I log in to say Gintech, right? How do I log in? Let's see if we get any hits out of here. Yep, there we go. And here it gives us a link. And then it says an additional question. Hey, did you forget your password? So you click on that and it will return, click the forgot password link. So these are just examples, very, very simple, easy to use examples of some of the things uh, that you can do directly out of here. So the one final bot, and this is kind of a combination between bots and integrations. So we do our time inside of this platform called uh, Sage Intech, and we are working on or designing a bot that would allow us to enter time directly through either a chat session or even behind the scenes, there's a power app that's uh, powering some of this information. So the first question when you power up this bot, it says, which customer is this, this is for? So in our case, this is going to be customer 00138. And of course, you could put in the customer name. And it'll take you through the sequence of questions that, uh, that will be uh, normally added into your um, list. So as you can see, this isn't, this isn't perfect, but uh, let's just let's just go with it for a second. So here's our customer. What project is this uh, for? Let's say it's the test project. It's going to ask, hey, what did you do? This is our test task. Is this on site? Yeah, I was on site. And is, is this a billable event? Yes. And then it asks you to uh, enter your work description. And finally, it'll ask you, uh, what date is this for? And the last part it'll ask you is how many hours do you spend? Uh, spend two. Okay. So does this look correct? Looks good to me. And let's see what happens. So here's my timesheet screen. I'm going to refresh it and give it one more second. I know we're running up against time, but let's see if this works. There we are. There I am. I showed up. And let's see if my time got in there correctly. There's my time. There's my hours and little comments. Perfect. 